Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Joe the Lawyer and also Common Sense Academy. Today, I'm going to take a look at an article out of the New York Times entitled Crisis Gives Fake Cops an Opening to Exploit. Um, I found this interesting. Um, it's interesting on its face, but I've also covered uh, fake cop impersonators on the Common Sense Academy channel. Again, uh, this this episode is going to be on the Common Sense Academy and Joe the Lawyer. Um, but before we dig into the article, uh, if you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Uh, mostly looking for subscribes right now. Go ahead, subscribe to my channel. Um, it is a free way to support the show. Uh, if you didn't know, most of my viewers are actually not subscribed. Go ahead and hit the notification bell as well. Um, and it does a lot uh, to have YouTube promote me. If I get to a thousand viewers on Joe the Lawyer, um, I can monetize the channel. And on Common Sense Academy, I'm trying to get to 10,000. It would uh, allow me to have a merchandise shelf and a bunch of other cool features. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button. Um, and before we dig into the article, please raise your your cup, your glass in the air. Uh, it tastes better when we sip together. Everybody's home because of the coronavirus. Um, so have some fun, drink some coffee, drink some wine. Alcohol sales are up 50% in the US. I imagine it's the same uh, in the UK and other countries. Cheers. Mm. Ah, good, some black rifle coffee. All right. Crisis gives fake cops an opening to exploit. Police impersonators with phony badges and flashing blue lights are taking advantage of quarantine rules to defraud or harass people across the country, the authorities warn. Um, also, I'm reading this article and I'm going to add my commentary in. I don't know if you guys like this format or the split screen where I'm down in the corner. Let me know in the comments. In Lodi, California, a man wearing a tactical type vest stopped a man in a park and told him he was violating curfew and needed to hand over a thousand dollars or go to jail. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, if a cop asks you for a thousand dollars cash, you better damn well know that something is wrong. All right. Either he's not a cop or he, that's a corrupt cop. You need to report that cash is not the way to go not directly to the police officer. In Erie, Colorado, a man with flashing lights in his car pulled over a woman driving to work and told her she was violating a stay-at-home order. He followed her back to her house and then drove off. That is just stalking and creepiness, friends. In Jackson County, Georgia, a man with a blue light on his dashboard who was sporting a pin-on badge pulled over the driver of a dump truck, identified himself as a deputy sheriff, and told the driver to get off the road because he was a non-essential employee. What's the point here? Just a, a straight power play? We all know a certain impersonator who, who pulls stuff like this or my Common Sense Academy videos. Across the country, police impersonators are exploiting the restrictions imposed during the coronavirus pandemic to conduct illegal traffic stops. Some have harassed women, others have tried to steal money or personal information, according to law enforcement officials. They are wannabe police officers and the coronavirus is making it easier for them to do it, said Janice G. Mangum, the sheriff in Jackson County. They're up to no good and it bothers me a lot. In many cases, the perpetrators are preying on the vulnerability and the fear people feel as the virus continues to spread rapidly, said Marcus Felsen, a professor of criminal justice at Texas State University. I argue strongly for opportunity being the driving force in crime, and this is a crime of opportunity, Dr. Felsen said. You know, I would agree with that. I think people commit crimes when there's an opportunity and a likelihood that they won't get caught. Well, they're not always good at that, but they always think they won't get caught. Academic research has also indicated that the increasing regulation of civilian life and greater police powers like those enacted after September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks make it easier for police impersonators to operate. The more we, re we regulate, the more opportunity it opens for people who want to capitalize on it for their own selfish purposes said Robert Galatelli, a historian at Florida State University, who has written about police impersonators in Nazi Germany. It's disgusting. I can only imagine what, you know, a police in the Nazi Germany got away with when they pretended to be cops or part of the, you know, the Nazi militia military force. People were probably scared out of their minds. 
In some cases where drivers were allowed to leave after being stopped briefly, there appears to have been no clear motive other than a desire to wield the power of the badge for personal satisfaction, the police said. I, I totally believe that. I totally believe that because I've seen, we see these guys, watch the Real World Police channel. Um, we see these guys who dress up, act like police officers, and they don't actually gain anything from it. It must be for the power. In Jackson County, for example, the man who identified himself as a deputy sheriff let the driver of the dump truck go without asking for his ID or demanding any money, Sheriff Mangum said. She said the police were investigating whether the bogus traffic stop might be linked to at least two similar incidents of police impersonation in Gainesville, Georgia and Dawson County, Georgia. <clears throat> A 2012 study of 56 incidents of police impersonation found the perpetrators fell into three general categories. I love categories. Many were common crooks looking for a quick shakedown. That one makes sense. A few were cop wannabes attracted to the authority and ego of policing. <laughs> And several were driven by uncommon compulsions, impersonating officers to engage in sexual misconduct. That the first category is they're, they're crooks, but it makes sense. The third category is gross and horrifying, okay? That middle category makes me laugh. I don't get it, but okay. Callie Renison, a professor at the University of Colorado Denver who helped to conduct the study, said impersonating a police officer was easy because it required little more than a few basic tools of law enforcement like a flashing blue light or a Ford Crown Victoria. I agree. That's true. That's true. If you get a nice uniform and you have a car with some lights on it, people will think you're a cop. Put a, you, anybody can buy handcuffs and put on their waistband. It all came down to power and control, having those symbols and people obeying it, she said. It's terrible for legitimate police officers because it undermines their authority. Absolutely. The police recommend that drivers should call 911 if they fear they've been stopped by a bogus law enforcement officer because dispatchers can determine if the stop is legitimate. They also recommend stopping in a well-lit public area and turning on the hazard lights to draw the attention of passing motorists. Drivers can also ask to see a badge or an ID card. Officer Hetty Stillman, a spokeswoman for the Lodi Police Department in California's Central Valley, said the victim who was approached in a park refused to pay the police impersonator $1,000. The victim was Hispanic, she said, which made her concerned that the city's large Pakistani and Latino populations could be targeted by ersatz officers claiming to enforce coronavirus restrictions. ersatz, E-R-S-A-T-Z. Maybe that's the German word for fake. Anybody and anyone that would be vulnerable in these times can be taken advantage of, especially if their country of origin doesn't have a strong relationship with law enforcement, Officer Stillman said. Several of the recent incidents took place in Colorado, and the police said it was too early to determine whether they might be linked. I guess what they're saying is if these people come from countries where law enforcement um, is not as maybe widespread or legitimate as it is in the United States, um, you know, they could be easily influenced by these impersonators, right? I mean, there's multiple news stories about the police being corrupt in Mexico um, and in other countries. And, you know, in these other countries, it might be normal. It might be normal to pay an officer $1,000 to not be taken to jail. Around midnight on March 25th in Aurora, Colorado, a woman was pulled over by a Ford Crown Victoria with red and blue lights. The police said the driver, a young man wearing a dark blue uniform, walked up to the woman's car and asked why she was out during the stay-at-home order due to COVID-19, the coronavirus disease. She noticed he didn't have a badge, and after a brief conversation, the man told her she could leave. A day later in Fort Collins, a woman was pulled over by a man wearing a blue police uniform and driving a pickup truck with red and blue lights. That right there should be a warning sign. He, I'm not saying that oh, police never drive trucks, but I've never seen it. He told the woman he was performing a stay home compliance check in order, and, and I've never seen a truck. I, I don't want to take that back. They, I'm sure they drive trucks, but for to do a traffic stop, he told the woman was performing a stay at home compliance check and ordered her to hand over her driver's license, insurance, registration, which he took to his truck, returned to several, and returned to her several minutes later. 
The following day, a police impersonator pulled drivers into an area blocked off by yellow traffic cones. The man, who was wearing a dark uniform with a traffic vest, had a baton and pepper spray and was asking for driver's licenses and insurance registration. He demanded that one driver explain why he was violating the COVID-19 law. John Fan, the assistant chief in Fort Collins, said, while officers are still enforcing traffic laws, they were not stopping cars solely for restrictions related to coronavirus. Unfortunately, criminals around the country are using COVID-19 concerns to their advantage in many ways. We will hold these people accountable for their illegal activities and encourage our communi community members to report any suspicious behaviors. The, the, the people, that's the end of the article, and I'll post the original down below. The people who do this strictly for that sort of power play or some sort of uh, sexual misconduct um, are truly, are, are like truly have many, many issues. I mean, many, many problems. The only ones that I see that make any sense, I mean, some crime like ha has like some uh, some logic to it, okay? And the people who are like asking for money, um, you know, the guy who, the, the guy was an idiot. He asked nobody, who has a thousand dollars on them? <laughs> like, oh, well, yeah, oh, okay, buddy, here, okay, officer, here's uh, the thousand dollars cash that I had in my pocket. Like, it's 2020, man. Uh, uh, people have cards. Unless the cop walks up and he's got like, uh, I don't know, he's got like a little, a little pad to scan your card. <laughs> oh, man. We're living in crazy times, ladies and gentlemen. I just thought that was bizarre. Another thing I can say is if, if the real police get a hold of these guys, it's going to be a rough day. It's going to be a rough day for them. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to Joe, the lawyer. Um, Common Sense Academy. I hope you enjoyed this article. Uh, let me know if you like the format. And yes, impersonating police officer is a statutory crime in every state in the union. So these people would be charged and it's not, you know, the, it, it, it's, it's a, at the very least, it's a misdemeanor. Um, it may even be a felony in certain jurisdictions, so they might get pounded. Thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Really looking for subscriptions right now. Sign up for my email list and you get a free PDF. If it's Joe the lawyer, you get the uh, you get uh, what to do when stopped by the police. And if it's uh, Common Sense Academy that you're watching this, it is um, it is the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement. Thank you for joining.